Welcome to the next lecture in the Internet of Things course at the University of Oulu. Uh, we have discussed a lot of about the things, uh, those devices, sensors, and applications we can uh, have in the Internet of Things or which benefit on the Internet of Things. But now we are switching to the uh, part of the Internet. So Internet of Things is all about the communication. And without the Internet part, we definitely doesn't have the Internet of Things. And to give a, uh, like a little the recap, we are discussing on the basics of the communications first and why uh, the traditional uh, basic internet communications, I mean TCP IP stack, it's not enough for uh, IoT or which kind of challenges there are in the uh, uh, TCP IP stack, why we need different communication protocols, different communication strategies, different networking strategies for, especially for internet of things. So uh, the protocol stacks, just a very basic level recap. So we have the five layer uh, protocol model or stack, theoretical uh, sort of model, uh, TCP IP, which is the one we are focusing on. But we also have this OSI model, ISO, ISO OSI model, a seven layer stack in the usual TCP IP stack, uh, the presentation layer and session layer are included, the other layers, and they don't have this separate layer. But just to keep in mind this layer structure when we are going forward. And we are starting to go through a little bit the details, recapping the details of the communication <clears throat> when we are considering the Internet of. Um, uh, in normal internet con communications. So this should be uh, already known by you from the previous courses uh, in the bachelor level, but just in case this is totally new thing for you, uh, it may be useful to read a little bit more about uh, how communication works. Internet communications, definitely. So we do have this tag from top down, um, application layer containing the actual messages, whether they are requests for uh, web service, uh, services, re uh, requests from browser to uh, web pages, sending emails, getting file transfer, and, and so on. And in Internet of Things, these can be like a push data here and there, or get that sense of information from there. So what's, what's the actual uh, message we want to deliver? Then we have the transportation layer, which is from end to end point delivery. So between the whoever is sending the message and whoever is receiving the message. Uh, network layer, which is the actual internet layer. So here we have the IP, uh, IP uh, layer, the end-to-end -end delivery again. Um, link layer between two links. So internet is the structure of the networks and it con consists of nodes or links uh, or links between the nodes. And in the link layer, we have technologies like normal internet communication, Wi-Fi, wireless networking. And here we use the MAC addresses. So I'm speaking of the MAC addresses, that's it. Uh, physical layer. So this is the physical media, which is transmitting data or, or managing the transmission of the uh, physical uh, <coughs> uh, data delivery. This is not something we are covering a lot, in, uh, in this course, but of course, when we are looking for new technologies, new solutions, we also need to remember we have the physical layer and we can change the media we are communicating through. So, so never forget the physical layer, even if we are not speaking about a lot about it. Uh, how the TCP IP works? Traditionally, you have the source, which is sending some message to the destination. And um, it's a delivering a message, which where we are splitting into pieces. So we had the packet-based delivery. So we're never sending the whole message as a whole because it would be huge, but we are making it the small packages, but these are manageable in the network. And uh, the, the message is first split to the segments in the transportation layer from port to port. Uh, network layer data crams from one IP address to another IP address, and the link layers, we have frames from um, one MAC address to MAC address and physical layer, of course. And we have a different levels of devices in um, the network. This is very simplified picture, 
uh, we have the link layer switches, which are usually operating only with the link layers between uh, one and uh, the closest uh, possible proximity. And we have a routers that have more capability to deliver the messages, routing, routing their messages to another destinations in the network. So these are the routing decisions are, are wanting uh, how to make the routing happen. But then, of course, we have the different layer uh, decisions to make, what protocols we use, and things like that. And when you're considering this example, this is a very simplified example. Um, and in IoT, we have uh, tens and tens of thousands of devices and thousands of devices um, participating in this delivery. So we need to consider a little bit more. Okay, but uh, by the way, this is the structure. Uh, so each of these messages, because you have the full huge message, you are splitting it into smaller pieces. Uh, and each of the messages, they need to have a headers. And, and, and the headers are kind of like, um, including information, giving where to deliver this part of the message, whether the part is a frame or data gram or data segment or the whole message. So these are sort of a basic structure how, how we deliver uh, these things. It's very shortly about the headers. If you want to see more about these, please go to see the actual standard of each uh, uh, protocol. So I'm not going to do any details of these protocols, uh, just to show you that the headers, and this, these are all the headers, for example, for TCP, which is the uh, uh, transport layer protocol here. So you have first have the message and you split it to the PCs and you put the headers on that piece. Then you take that message and you put it again in smaller PCs and more headers, more headers and so on. So even in TCP, this is, um, uh, where you handle this kind of uh, um, sequences that when the packages, the small pieces are delivered to the destination, how you organize them, how you put them on, on the order, how you manage that you don't have any missing packages and things like that are managed in, in this level with by the sequence numbers, acknowledgement numbers. So we are not only sending messages from uh, destination to, uh, to, from source to the destination, but we are also sending back Acknowledgements, yes, I got the message. So this is actually quite slow uh, protocol uh, for, as it's a reliable. So because you need to get an acknowledgement for everything, but it's, it's slow. Then we do have a, things like UDP, it's another protocol for um, this level of uh, delivery, which is mainly pushing the data. But again, you have a checksums, you have a, a different flags, you have a different uh, port numbers, destination addresses to cover in, in, in this level. IPv4, the traditional one mainly used, and I will be discussing a lot about why IPv4 is not enough. It's said that IPv6, which is the next standard after IPv4, <coughs> will be the main uh, standard of making the internet things actually happen and making it possible. So you should have known from the news and media that the IPv4 numbers, uh, the address numbers have run out multiple years ago. So, so we, do, we are kind of out of the addresses. But of course, there are technologies to manage in the situation, even if they are a little bit like covering up a problem uh, where there is an actual solution, just IPv6. But because of the regu regu uh, regulations and, and political governmental decisions and the fact that the changing something technology from, an, uh, from one to another actually costs money. So, so these changes in technologies are not that fast. IPv4 have been around like as long as we have, a, have an internet. So, so the processes and switching processes are not that fast. But here I want to highlight a couple of important things. And terminology, for example, time to leave count, which is basically giving you a number of hops uh, the packets can make between um, uh, nodes in the network. And this will be very crucial for IoT when we are considering different type of delivery protocols and types of delivering, for example, fluting something on the network. We need to know that some packages are not going to uh, be in the network forever. So we have the time to leave counts 
giving an estimation how many hops the package can make until it should reach the destination and things like that. Again, uh, checksums to make sure that packages are proper, uh, uh, delivered um, as they are supposed to be, length numbers, other numbers, source addresses, and things like that. And uh, this kind of means that the delivery header, header count is just making the packages bigger and bigger in the proper dimension. And of course, internet and Wi-Fi then where you are in the link layer, we have the MAC addresses, which are dedicated addresses for each network card provided by the manufacturer. So the main difference here, IP address, you can change it. You can have a proxy between different IP uh, subnetworks. Uh, you can uh, switch those numbers, but the MAC addresses are kind of mean to be stable provided by the manufacturer. Of course, you can crack it, you can change it, but that's not mean to happen. So why this classical TCP IP is not enough? So first of all, when we are going to um, look at any uh, kind of big scale IoT application, I mean more than just your home, your single home, smart home, of course, even with the homes, when you have a city full of smart homes, the number of different devices connecting to this network will be immediately bigger. But for example, considering manufacturing, uh, there can be tens of thousands of sensors measuring some quality of the products, measuring the processes, uh, handling the logistics and all of those small devices in the traditional TCP IP would need and their own addresses. That's why one of the issues here is addressability. So IPv4 do have a limited number of space and all of those um, ways to fix this issue without using the IP5 are a little bit like um, as we say in Finnish, so, so there is there is no full solution, but we have a little bit like a tape we can put here and there to make it happen. And also the configuration demand. So every time you use an IP-based network, you need to configure new devices coming to this uh, network. For example, if you consider city-scale computing, where you have a multiple moving vehicles, you have smartphones, you have a carry-on devices, you need to configure all of those devices uh, every time we see a new device coming to the network. And in IoT, we have a very heterogeneous set of devices. Available technologies in smallest, smallest sensors, they may not even be technologically capable of running the whole TCP IP um, configuration process because it takes computational power. If we have a very low energy, um devices we don't want to use that battery life to make the full tcp ip communication to happen uh, that's why the transmission protocols between these small energy efficient devices uh, can vary a lot and we need uh, different gateways and different networking structures a uh, new protocols coming here to make it possible to communicate between those small and and Okay. Limited in capabilities, devices, uh, limited computing capabilities, and they may be battery dependent, or they do have a small battery, but we don't want to use all of it immediately because charging devices takes time. And usually those devices, when they are in charge, they are not in operation. Consider, for example, a drone, which is a battery dependent <coughs> flying object. You cannot fly it if you are charging it because otherwise you have a <laughs> charging cable in there. So, so th these are things we need to consider. And uh, these are the main reasons uh, why this uh, classic TCP IP is not enough. But I have to say classic TCP IP is there and will be there because this is the internet networking, internet protocols, and there's no internet without the IP protocols. So, Next lectures, I will cover a couple of solutions and a couple of um, different perspectives for uh, networking communications for Internet of Things. I will cover a web of things, the addressability issues in more detail, 
wireless communications. As I mentioned, we have the mobile devices, we have the vehicles, we have all kinds of moving items in the environment. That means that we need uh, wireless communications to react to those devices. We have specialized wired communications. We have a machine to machine communication, technically meaning communication without the human intervention. And we have a different resource finding uh, mecha mechanisms like beaconing resource sharing, subscribing resources and things like that. So these topics are to come. Uh, welcome to watch also the next lectures. Thank you.